You too, what's going on, man? That's the one and only Avanta Chief. Hey, man, we back again with another video, as y'all can see. I told y'all in 2025, I was getting really serious about the YouTube content. But in today's video, we will be going over a seller amp walkthrough. So if you are new to Amazon and don't know how to use seller amp, I will be showing you how to navigate this software. So stay tuned, y'all. All right, YouTube. So the first thing you want to do is when you pull up seller amp, is go directly to your settings. We're going to knock this out first, right? So you're going to go down to buying criteria and for your minimum BSR, that stands for your best seller's rank. You want to put zero there and then your maximum BSR at 1%. So you want to be in the top, at least the top 1% of a category, top 1% of sports and outdoors, top 1% of grocery and gourmet foods, top 0% of toys, whatever the case may be, right? Next, for me, I like to have a minimum profit of at least $3 per unit. And then for your minimum return on your investment, at least 30%. Scroll down to your additional cost. And if you are not utilizing any prep prep centers, more than likely you're not, just leave it at zero. And then for miscellaneous fee, the percentage, you wanna account for your state sales tax. So I believe Ohio is like 5.75, but I leave it at zero because I use tax exemption, you know? Next for your inbound shipping, and this is for when you are doing FBA shipments. So basically, Amazon will charge you a fee to send in goods into their place of business, right? For most standard size items, I have mine set to 60 cents per pound. Once you start to send in heavier items to Amazon fulfillment centers, this number will change. It can go anywhere from like a dollar to like a dollar twenty, if I'm not mistaken, though. But I leave mine at 60 cents per pound because I'm not sending in heavy items, right? Now, I like to have all of these tabs enabled. So quick info. Enable ranks and prices, enable profit, discounts, offers, charts, buy box analysis, Amazon Seller Central, alerts, variations to keep the graphs, and you can enable Google Sheets and notes and tags, but you shouldn't have to worry about that starting off, right? Then just say, Now, this is a product that I scanned in store. It's a Wilson volleyball, it's by Wilson. The category is sports and outdoors. It shows the ratings and the reviews of this product. Next, we're going to go down to our ASIN. Our ASIN stands for Amazon Standard Identification Number. And basically, this is how every product in the Amazon catalog gets identified. UPC is just another way of identifying products. Quick info, the first thing we see is the eligibility. So we are eligible to sell Wilson products. Next, we will go over to our Alerts tab. So it will say the eligibility. It will let you know if this product is a hazmat, if it's a dangerous goods product, just if Amazon shares the buy box amongst other sellers on this listing. If it's a private label, which stands for if someone created their own brand and they're, and they're currently selling it on Amazon, Wilson is not a known PL brand. IP analysis is basically if a company is known for issuing out intellectual property complaints amongst other sellers. And then it lets you know the size of the product, if it's admittable, and then it had does it has variation. So basically, if this product with it came in like a red, red color, green color, blue color, a different size ball, so on and so on, right? Next, we have our BSR that stands for best sellers rank. It indicates how popular a product is in Amazon's catalog. So I like to be under 150K. And if you look at this number right beside the BSR, you see the percentage. Remember, in our settings, we set up uh, our maximum BSR percentage to be at least 1%. So this meets our BSR criteria. It gives you the thumbs up, which is good, right? Next, we have our estimated sales. It indicates a good estimate how many times a month this product sells. So it says roughly 50 plus times a month. It's a pretty decent lead. Now, this is where a lot of people get confused at. The max cost. The max cost indicates how much you should be paying in the store or online for this unit to meet your profit margins you had set up in your settings. So what was that? The $3 profit and the 30% ROI. So you need to be paying at least $15.95. I found this product for $4.99. So as you can see, we are blowing this max cost out of the roof right now. So that's that's very amazing. Next, we have our sales price, which is basically showing you how much you want to sell this product for. So this product currently right now is being sold for $32.99 on Amazon. So profiting $15.75, a 315% ROI, y'all, yeah, which is pretty impressive. Remember, we're supposed to be making the minimum at least $3 profit in the 30% ROI. We're making $15.75. 315% ROI. And if y'all don't know what the ROI stands for, return on your investment, it indicates if the product is a profitable investment. So the minimum we like to do is at least 30%. So dope. 
Your offer summary basically shows you the amount of people that's currently selling this product. So we have 32 offers in total. We got 15 sellers doing the FBA and we got 17 doing FBM, which is fulfilled by merchant. Another another fact that I always get another fact that I always get asked is what is the buy box? Yeah, the buy box is simply this right here. The buy now button. That's all it is. So someone, a customer will go to this product and just click buy now. And then that sale will go directly to town trail supply company. So you always want to get the buy box by any given chance, right? That's the buy box. It's currently buy box net $32.99. So next we have the lowest FBA seller's price at $31.88. And then we have the lowest FBM seller's price at $32.99. The profit calculator just accounts for all the fees, right? So if we are doing FBA, we profit in $15.75, 315% ROI. Now, let's say you send this product into FBA, right? And you don't you don't make any sales the first month. You would start being charged storage fees. So for the first month, now it goes down to $15.53, $15.31, $15.09, $14.86, $14.50, $14.75. So it goes up into a 12-month period, right? This is why it's vitally important to find products that sell very fast, right? You don't want to incur incur those storage fees. Next. So we have the uh, total fees that shows you Amazon's fees that's being taken out for this product. So for referral fees, they're taking out $4.95 and then fulfill, fulfillment, $6.93. Next, we have our inbound shipping cost of $0.37. Cents. And you scroll down. You will see your estimated Amazon payout of at 2111. So basically, it's all done for you if you're doing FBA. Now, if you are doing FBM, let's switch it over. Fulfilled by merchant. You are the merchant. You see this little box here that says FBM costs? You never want to leave this box empty. This is your estimated shipment, right? So most people will. I'm, I'm, so my first mistake when starting Amazon, I was doing FBM. So I would think that I was making 2305. I was so, 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 so wrong. <laughs> I was not making my expected profit margins because I didn't count for my shipping costs. So always account for your shipping costs because you are the merchant, right? So what you do is scroll up and you click the dimensions. So something like this weighs nine ounces, right? Off the top of my head, I know this is gonna cost me at least about five to six bucks in shipping. So let's just put I just put about five bucks, right? And now this is the estimate of what you will be making doing the FBM. You're making 1805, 361% ROI. You tend to make a little bit more money when doing FBM because Amazon does not include though all those fees, as you can see right here. So FBA, you're making 1575. FBM, you're making 1805. So just a little bit more money, y'all. Offer tab, and this basically just shows you the amount of sellers that sell this product. So, and it ranks from the lowest price to the highest price. So, as you can see, you got the FBA seller here. It shows their stock levels. He has one in stock, selling at thirty-one eighty-eight, and so on and so on. So, basically, the number, the highest price is the FBA seller at the twenty-two spot. Got six in stock at fifty-three ninety-five. Hey, he might could make that fifty-three ninety-five once everyone sell out. But the buy box is gravitating towards this pricing along here, you know? Next thing we wanna do is scroll down to our charts. And this is very, very important because it shows you if Amazon is on this listing, you would know if Amazon is on this listing because you will see this big blocky orange layer right here, right? Next, we have our buy box, which is the pink line. It's the most important line on the graph because it lets you know who's been winning the buy box. So we see that the buy box is currently at 32, 32.99. So you wouldn't wanna price your product at 40 bucks, 50 bucks, 60 bucks. This is where the buy box is at. So always pay attention to the pink line, y'all. And then next we have our FBA sellers, oops, which is the orange. You will see it glow up. Let me see if I can hit it. Well, there, right, yep. Right. Probably can't see it. There it go. <laughs> you might see it a little bit though. Those are the uh, FBA sellers. And then we have our FBM sellers, which is the blue line. As you can see, it pops up at, pops up at random little, little locations. <laughs> and then we have our sales rank, which is the green line. That stands for basically your BSR. Second chart shows you the monthly sold of this product. So we scroll over just a little bit currently, roughly 50 times a month. And then we have our third chart that indicates close our offer count, the ratings of this product, and the review count. So offer is purple. The ratings is like a teal. And then the review is like a little light green color, right? 
scroll down to our buy box analysis, y'all. Most of y'all are confused about this. Your buy box analysis indicates who was getting a share of the buy box in the last 90 days or 30 days. When I look at this, I typically look at the last 30 days, right? And when you look at the buy box analysis, you want everyone, you want to see just a variety of colors, just like shown here, right? That everyone in the last 30 days has been getting some buy box share. This is the most important. All this is all you, all you should be caring about. A number here and your storefront name should be sold by. So you so where it says sold by, your storefront name needs to be here. That's all that matters. This is the buy box analysis. And this also shows you how you can price your products. So if we see that someone won a buy box at an average price of $31.88, $32.99, $31.70 three hours ago, $33.09, 10 hours ago, that's how you want to price your products. You don't see anywhere that this buy box analysis is 40 bucks. 50 bucks, 60 bucks. This is the range that you want to be in. For So that will be all for our seller app tutorial. I hope y'all picked up what I put down for y'all because I know I always try to bring y'all the gems in the game. But to conclude everything, um, this is a profitable and a decent product lead. So this is the kind of things you want to look for. Video, like, comment, share, subscribe, uh, tip, donate, um, exchange. <laughs> <laughs> Exchange, whatever the case may be, do what you gotta do to put the word out, y'all. Until next time, y'all love.